Well, it is what it is. So, uh, before we start this little, uh, I'm not even going to call it an episode, but thank you for joining me, and it is really good to see you again. All right, before we begin, these are not sponsors, okay? These are just things that I like that kind of go with the brand. First one we got here is Ghost Cherry Limeade pre-workout. It is the Legend variety and it is just delicious. So, it is great. So, I don't know how much caffeine's in it. It should say, right? Oh, 250 milligrams per serving. This stuff is good, plus it makes you like all tingly and stuff too, which is an added plus. And it's completely legal. The other one I have, you know, when you want to get those caffeinated gains, is Premier Protein with Energy. This is, of course, the coffee flavor, I guess? It doesn't say what exactly what it is but that's fine um but it has 95 milligrams of caffeine per serving the servings is two scoops which is ridiculous it's like raisin bran in there you know so did i just pop this video on to tell you about some caffeinated uh supplements no that would have been crazy I have more around here but I don't know where they are I don't want to dig so it's fine it's fine it is what it is so no what we're talking about today or this evening as it were is something that I want to go over so with you the esteemed audience yourself I'm going to make my uh, screen very small here, or me on the screen very small, and we're going to go over this uh, article by uh, the Ryan Strategic Advisory, which your friend and mine, Peter Ryan. So, let's start. Peter Ryan, if you don't know him, he's one of the hosts of... Uh, the CX files and uh, very 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 good guy very Canadian so which is good in my book I grew up in Maine which is about as Canadian as you can get and yeah we uh, use Canadian money at the stores so very good guy friend of the show been on the CX files a couple of times myself um, since I don't usually have guests, I have not had the pleasure of having Peter Ryan on. But this is like the next best thing. Poor CX, 2024 elections may change that. This was published on Valentine's Day, which, as of the recording of this video, was last week, I think. And we're going to go through this, and we're going to talk about it. Now, just to be clear right off the bat, I, your friendly caffeinated CX host, am against most government regulations All right, when it comes to business, other than the obvious stuff. right? You shouldn't be able to take advantage of people. Right? You shouldn't be able to rip people off. I think payday loans are predatory. Just the obvious stuff. But I don't think uh, the government should be able to tell people how to run their business. Nice try, Fed. I'm still not paying my taxes. Stuff like that. I'm not going to go that far. Okay? Because that would get me into a lot of trouble. So... Let's begin, shall we? Whether it be digitally driven interactions or those over the telephone, 
Customer experience has been in a tailspin for some time. Consumers around the world are beyond fed up. The excuses of not enough staff, high wage rates, and so on do not really matter to an end user who needs information on a utility bill, help changing a flight, or finding out when an online food order may arrive. All to no avail. We've all been there. Ah, oh, God. Imagine, like, navigating through a artificially stupid chatbot to find out when your uh, Uber Eats is going to arrive. Sheesh. When you see that uh, the car, they picked up your order, but they're just parked somewhere. Yeah, it's beautiful. Oh, did I not tip enough? Did I not tip enough, Mr. Uber driver? Hmm. What are you doing to my food that you're parked in that parking lot so long? Do I trust eating it? Is this chatbot going to help me at all? Lawma lawmakers are not blind to the level of rage that so many consumers have at the moment. The, pol the political environment of 2024 and beyond is one that politicians will seize on for an advantage over their rivals. With customer satisfaction tanking in so many different countries, nobody should be surprised to see minimum standards of CX become a potential electoral hot potato. I'm going to start using that phrase, Peter. That's, that's amazing. Uh, this has been most recently witnessed in Spain. A law passed in 2022. I remember posting on LinkedIn about this too. Uh, a law passed in 2022 that comes into effect this year mandates that all companies operating in the country with over 250 employees or 50 million euros or more in revenue must provide consumers with live support during business hours and have a wait time of no more than three minutes. To comply with the legislation, the issue must be settled within 15 days. Refusal to follow this new regulation means fines of up to 100,000 euro. Is it euro or euros? I thought the euro was a sandwich. Was it a gyro? Anyway, while the enforceability of such legislation is debatable, the spirit of the law comes from somewhere and that is likely the frustration found among Spanish consumers. The question then becomes, what is preventing other jurisdictions from following suit and passing their own requirements for how private businesses must address customer service needs? Very little, really. Indeed, given the political atmosphere of 2024, ho ho ho, we're feeling it already, aren't we? It could happen sooner rather than later. Over the next 11 months, there will be a significant number of elections around the world. Two will occur in countries where consumer satisfaction has been running at abysmal levels in recent time. In the UK, the Institute of Customer Service reports that end user satisfaction is, a, is at its lowest point since 2015. In the USA, there was admittedly a net CX improvement in Q4 2023 but the ghosts of terrible service that created the American Customer Satisfaction Index not even two years ago still linger. Alas, enterprises have done little to help themselves of late, with more half-baked automated systems pushing the limits of end-users' patience and a growing number of companies simply refusing to offer voice-based service that is crazy. Politicos on either side of the pond have every opportunity to make better CX a ballot issue. That no voice thing is crazy. Um, I get the appeal of it some days, but then my, uh, my intelligence and my rational thinking kicks in and... I kick myself in the ass and call myself an idiot and tell myself never to think that way again. So, there you go. 
Maybe some other people should do the same thing. I don't know. I don't know. But that is crazy. No voice. Yeah, let's just let ChatGPT take care of it. Maybe they can start off every chat uh, interaction with, in a bustling world of X, in the tumultuous world of Y, you can always tell when someone posts something that was generated on ChatGPT, because it always starts with, uh, in X world of Y. So, just food for thought when you're going through your LinkedIn posts. Okay. So, no one likes frivolous government regulation. In the current business environment, there is simply no reason for enterprises, regardless of sector, not to offer a decent level of support to consumers. To avoid more laws like that in Spain, CX decision makers must take action immediately. A logical first step would be to tighten up poorly designed, deployed chatbots that don't work. I've been saying this for years, and um, to tell you the truth right now, and I've, I've never made this a secret, one of my favorite hobbies is to go in on people's websites and break their chatbot. It is fun to me, and it is very easy in most cases. Usually it gets it into a infinite loop, right, which is also fun. Although I was able to go on to a, uh, the, the name of the company will be undisclosed here, but I was able to get this chatbot to give me the name and address and phone number of one of their rival companies, and this is in the plumbing space. All right, so that was fun. I should charge for that service. Where was I? Okay. The frustrations outlined by South Korean consumers in this article, which there's a link here, um, are almost certainly felt by end users around the world. Then, ditch the digital-only contact center and find the means of ensuring a decent level of staff support for callers. Martin Lewis's campaign to call out firms using the excuse of unusually high call volumes in the UK as a reason for prolonged hold times has gained notable media coverage and could easily become a political lightning rod. Working with a BPO partner to source talent onshore or further afield would be an effective manner of addressing this in the near medium term. I'm going to come back to that. I have some thoughts on that. There are just two things that firms can do to stave off political scrutiny and greater regulation. If efforts are not made by enterprises to internally police the quality of customer service they offer, parliaments and legislatures might just do it for them. First of all, amen. Amen. Yeah, so... Now, a couple of thoughts while I readjust and annoy you with the screen changing here. All right, hope I didn't give anybody a vertigo. So, a couple of thoughts on this. So, one, working with a BPO partner to source talent onshore or further afield would be an effective manner of addressing this in the near medium term. I've never made it a secret how I truly feel about outsourcing. And is this because I've been burned before, both as an employee and as an employer? Yes. I am not a fan. I am of the opinion that for most cases, in most situations, that a company that does business in one country or one community should hire from that country or from that community. If you take jobs and money out of a country or a community, it ruins the ecosystem 
of that country or community. If all of a sudden you move all these wages from a country or community into another country or community, the original country or community starts to fall as well. Because Polly can't go down to Greg, the butcher, and use his money that he got from his job in the community to pay Greg the butcher for some meat. And if Greg the butcher isn't making money from Polly, then he can't afford to buy Frank's bread. And if nobody's buying Frank's bread because nobody's buying Greg's meat because Polly lost his jobby, then Frank, I'm trying to keep these names straight, then Frank is not going to buy Charlene's, I don't know, flowers, right? And so on and so forth. I think for as much as possible, you should keep the money within the community. If you service a particular area of a country, that's your hiring pool. That's my opinion. I'm probably wrong on that, and that's probably just from being burned before, like I said, as both an employee and as an employer. Bad outsourcing partners will do that to you, and that's okay. I spoke at length at a, uh, an event hosted by Peter Ryan where I talked exactly about that, and I will never hold my tongue on that. It was bad. It was a very, very bad experience. And honestly, maybe psychologically, I have not recovered from how bad it was and how bad it was for business. And it was garbage. And there we go. So, now, as far as that, this law, if it's passed, is going to encourage a lot more outsourcing, right? because of wages, because of the fact that things cost more now, including employees, especially good employees. And why pay for one good employee with X amount of wage dollars when you can get four good employees or even just mediocre employees for the same wage price? right? You'll never wait three minutes again. You'll never get your issue solved, but you don't have to wait three minutes. So there you go. And let's talk about the, uh, due to an unusually high call volume, your call is going to be blah, 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 blah. It's not unexpected anymore, is it? Change your message. Give a callback option. And then, you know, have someone available on the line when they do call you back. Because, oh my gosh, I've gone into that. Don't just have a chat bot on your site that doesn't lead to a human if someone says, hey, I want to talk to a human. Right? Or can see that it's a uh, chat bot is going into an infinite loop and then a human being can take over. This is simple amateur stuff, guys. It is very easy to do. The reason it's not done is because you don't want to do it. And that's, I'm not going to say that's okay. I almost did, but it's not. Do better. All right? We shouldn't have to have the government, big daddy government, big brother, policing and enforcing customer experience. Customer experience should not have to be regulated by the government. That's crazy. It should be regulated by the customer. And the customer will vote with their wallet and their feet. That is what makes capitalism work. The fact that customers can choose what businesses they want to do business with. 
period. If you have to wait 20 minutes on hold, but once you do get to speak with someone, the service is exquisite and you want to do business with that people, you should have every right to do that. I think a really good test for this law would be for government owned like utilities or services start with them first in the states have it for the IRS have it for the DMV then go after the Walmarts and the uh, telecom and everybody else right start with the government services and the government utilities first then if it works spread it out if you must to the private sector I don't know I only meant for this to be like five minutes long but it is what it is I'll see you guys next time bye <laughs>